Hi everyone, this is Lady T, the Lady T Speaks TV, where I talk about all facets of relationships. This is part three of the series that I have continued, um, and we're talking about healthy marital relationships, how to get there if you're in a difficult marriage, and what God's design is for a healthy marriage and what it looks like. So I want to pray, and then after I pray, I'm going to bring you um, some more information today that I want you to think about. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for um, being alive in this time and day and in this season. Father, I pray right now for those who are in difficult marriages and that the marriage has become more difficult because of the pandemic crisis that we're currently in. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would hide me behind the gift and that you will allow the Holy Spirit to speak into the hearts of your children and that the things that they hear, that they would apply them to their daily lives um, as it relates to relationship. I thank you so much for each and every person who is going to learn how to live according to your purpose and your plan for their lives. I come against the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy their happiness and their peace in you and their joy in their marriage. Father, give them to understand that it is you that have made them and not them themselves, and that because they belong to you, there are things that they should be doing um, that is pleasing in your sight. And Father, for those who do not know your word, and do not know how the Holy Spirit operates. Your word said that you would lead them and you would guide them into the truth. So I pray the word over each of these marriages, each of these individuals, let them examine their motives, let them examine their hearts, let them examine um, what is going on in them internally so that they can make the necessary changes as they apply the word of God to their lives. I thank you again for you are awesome in all your ways. I thank you because you said in your word, if our ways please you, then you would give our, us the desires of our hearts. And so our desires need to be made manifest in what you have designed, opposed to our own selfish wills. Father, I thank you so much for each and every one of these difficult marriages that I will be able to speak life into their hearts today. You said that we have the pen of a ready writer, and that means that we have the ability and we are equipped to pray people through situations that are difficult, um, to speak to their hearts until there is a release in their spirit man on the things of what God wants to teach and to show them. I pray for the children who are susceptible to receiving what is going on um, in these marriages. Father, give this man and woman to understand without a shadow of a doubt that marriage is a ministry. It is their first ministry. And as they are rearing their children to be mindful that God has entrusted those children to them as a gift so that they will be the best people that they can be to be great examples to their children today. Father, I thank you so much. It is an honor to serve you. It's an honor to be able to minister to your children. And Father, for those who think that they can't make it through this difficult marriage, Father, encourage them, strengthen them, empower them, love them through, give them all understanding for your word says and all I getting we should get an understanding father give them your wisdom because wisdom is the principal thing father show them how you have spread your love abroad in them so that they can share with others the love of God especially in this difficult marriage father let them know you will never leave them you will never forsake them and that you love them and you always have their best interest at heart now, Father, as I begin to speak into the lives of these people, my prayer is that you would speak through me and that you, most of all, would get the glory out of these marital relationships and out of our lives 
Father, we thank you for the glory of God is in the earth. We are your people. We are your sheep. We are the ones that you call beloved. And so, God, give us to understand our responsibilities one to the other. The Bible says that if we have love one to the other, then people will know that we are your disciples. So I thank you again. And I ask all these things. I consider them to be done in Jesus precious name. Amen. And let's talk about some questions. Um, last night I was thinking about some things concerning um, talking about being in a difficult marriage. And um, I have some questions that I wanted to ask um, today. And I hope that you all will really search and examine your heart because God is after your heart. Um, it's so important that your heart is right. And that whenever you do, you have the right motivation behind it. So I wanted to ask you, what stops you from loving God's way? What is the condition of your heart? Do you even know how to love how God loves? And if not, do you know how to go into the scriptures and find out? Now, we were talking about 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, which I call it the love chapter and and I gave you some information in the discussion to um, let you know if you're not living this out in your marital relationship um, and here's one of the reasons why you may have some difficulty um, healing in your emotions sometimes when we get married we're not healed and I talked a little bit about that yesterday so when you come into the marriage you come in as a emotional wreck sometimes not often but sometimes or you come in and you haven't dealt with any of the emotions that you have from either past um, childhood traumas from um, failed relationships and things like that so when you come into a marriage god's design is for you both to be whole and complete wanting nothing and the marital relationship is supposed to be designed to glorify God, like I told you before, in the earth to show people who God is by having a loving and kind relationship. And the best way to do that oftentimes is when you're married, uh, because you get the opportunity to uh, measure your understanding of God by displaying his love in that relationship towards another person when you're living in the same household. And oftentimes um, for women and men, but a lot of times women are emotionally led. And so everything is what I feel. And God's word is said that we should not be so fleshy, but we should be led by the spirit of God, not by our emotions, not by our feelings. Now we do have emotions. There's nothing wrong with that, but they shouldn't be leading in your relationship um, in your marital relationship and in any relationship whatsoever. So I'm asking you, what is the condition of your heart? We're supposed to be agents of peace. We're supposed to um, bring peace wherever we go. Um, when we have the whole armor on of God, then we are um, people who bring peace. And that's just in layman's terms. So what do you believe? Um, what are you thinking what is your motivation in your marriage? Do you realize that marriage is a ministry? Do you understand that you minister one to the other? Um, and that is an everyday practical living by the way that you treat one another, uh, whether you're kind to each other, whether you're respectful of each other. Um, those are the things that you should be really thinking about. Um, Jesus died for our sinful nature. So it shouldn't show up in your relationship and your marital relationship, but it does. And here's the good thing. God gives us a choice. We all have choices to make on a regular basis. And you can choose to stay in a difficult marriage and not allow God to help you through the difficulty. Or you can make a choice to fight for what is right in your marriage and to honor God. Because remember, you took a vow with that person, whether you got married in the church, whether you got married at the Justice of Peace, like at City Hall, whether you got married outside, you made a vow 
to that person that you would love them, you would honor them, you would cherish them. Um, and, and those are the things in sickness and health, um, in good times and bad times, you made that vow. So we talked about a vow as being a sacred um, thing that you make with a person. And we also talked about a covenant. And a covenant is between you and God. So you and your, your husband or wife, you stood before witnesses saying that you were going to stick it out pretty much. And that's in layman's terms. You was going to stick it out. So then when things get difficult, most people, especially like we're talking in a difficult marriage, you make a decision to leave based on your selfishness, based on what you feel you're not getting. Remember, you're supposed to be happy. You're responsible for your own happiness. When you're in a marriage, it's not that the person is supposed to make you happy. You should be happy already. In other words, and happy is, you know, a word that secular people use, but we, your joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So your joy should come from, it should come from him. Um, and the person that you're with, your husband, your spouse should enhance your happiness, enhance your joy. But the joy comes from God and your strength comes from him. And when you can understand that, even though you're in this relationship, um, that God should be first and foremost at the head of the relationship. In other words, your relationship to God is imperative because if you understand um, your relationship with God and what God has designed for you and the things that he has prepared for you, then when you're in a difficult marriage, you can navigate through that very successfully because you understand that you're not asking, um, you don't have unrealistic expectations from your husband or wife and that your all in all comes from Jesus and that you're asking him to come in and to make a difference. But that all goes back to examining your heart, examining your motivations. If you don't know the word of God and you don't know what our responsibilities are to God and what he has promised us, you're going to have difficulty in any relationship. So it's important that you, number one, um, have a relationship with God and that you understand um, what it is, you know, God is requiring from you personally. And as you understand that, then you can display God's love to your husband or wife. But oftentimes our heart is not right and we are moving through our flesh instead of being led by the spirit. And we are allowing our emotions to dictate how things are supposed to go. And so, again, we talked about the different issues that can arise in marriage. Um, and so if you can get that foundation of understanding and applying the word of God, knowing the truth of the word of God and applying it in your everyday relationships, then you will be more successful. Now, there's nothing you can do about your spouse other than, and one of the most important things I should say is pray for them, but you can, you, you have a responsibility to love them. That is your responsibility to love them no matter what unconditionally. But again, you won't be able to do those things if number one, your relationship with God is not intact. Um, you don't have that kind of relationship with God through the word where you can sustain different types of issues and situations. So it's important to get that understanding. And I'm going to come back. We'll talk some more about um, being emotionally led and what you need to understand how God is speaking to you. Because in your difficult marriage, God is wanting to work on you. Even though we're pointing the finger at the other person, God is always trying to get your attention to get you to make the necessary changes in you. So that's first and foremost to understand. So if your heart isn't in the right condition, then guess what? You're not going to be successful in loving anyone else because you have issues that need to be resolved or issues that you haven't dealt with so that they can be resolved. And remember, Jesus died for all our emotional issues. He died for all of our sin, past, present, future. 
He died for us to have a right to live an abundant life here on earth. Um, we should be successful. He died for us to be successful in relationships. We look at the relationship between Jesus and the Father. That's such a perfect example of how relationships should be. No matter what, Jesus was not focused on himself. He was focused on what God told him to do, what his plan was for him, what his purpose was on the earth. And we need to be clear about that as well. So I'll come back. We'll talk some more about this. And this is part three of our conversation. All right, everyone. This is Lady T with Lady T Speaks TV, where I talk about all facets of relationships. Be blessed. Be empowered to succeed. Trust God for everything. Things will get better. Shalom.